Well, welcome back to Modeling Time with me, Brian Banna. Well, it's time to get some tape on the B&M box car, get tape on the wood sections, and so I can get the uh, metal parts painted. So um, I don't want to waste a lot of time on this. I want to get this car done. I don't have anything else to really say about it other than, um, you know, the tools that I'll be using and stuff like that. A couple people had asked if I could show the, the masking, so... I'll, I'll show some masking. So let me get the camera set up over here and uh, we'll get down to taping. Alright, so I need to get the wood portion taped and oh look at that. That side's taped. I had to figure out you know how I was going to approach it and stuff before I put it on camera and uh, it took a little over an hour to do this. So I'm not going to show all of it but I will show, you know, I'll do a panel and how I do, you know, the angles and stuff like that. It's, it's just taping. I've got all the tools here that I need. Um, this straight edge just for cutting along. Tweezers. Now these are just regular <clears throat> store-bought Walgreens or cheapo tweezers. And originally they weren't grabbing at the tip and I looked at them as because the tips were kind of out like that so I just took some pliers and tweaked them so now they're actually closing on each other so maybe they'll actually hold something <laughs> let's laugh at that um, got an exacto knife for you know cutting along the straight edge and cutting my fingers off if I need to scissors for cutting tape a scalpel for cutting the tape on the model um, a burnished um, toothpick for pushing the uh, tape into the corners and stuff and tape. Now I've got all three sizes of Tamiya tape. I'm only going to use a small size but I brought all three of them over just in case I needed them for something and I didn't. <clears throat> I used to use something called washi tape and during one of my taping sessions when you get you know you you want to burnish that where did I put that toothpick? This thing seems to, oh there it is, always hides on me. When you're burnishing down the, the tape and stuff, well in one of the sessions of doing that, when I started peeling it off, it pulled a little bit of the, the, the paint off. Now I don't know if that was because I was using Vallejo paint, and I don't really like using Vallejo paint, and it just pulled a piece off the edge or whatever, but I don't use it anymore. I use Tamiya tape. I like it a lot. I like the, new, the newer Tamiya tape. I used to have an old one and the tape was much thicker than what it is now and, and now it, it goes on nice and thin, it holds really really well and that's going to, to look really nice. But before I move on to that, let me show you what I've been else I've been working on here. I've been working on three of these, these um, ACF center flow hoppers. So um, basically I've cut all the detail on the uh, off the end. I've filled all the holes and then I added AccuRail parts back in. Um, I designed a new draft gearbox, 3D printed. This is an AccuRail lid. And then of course the weights and I did the NMRA uh, weight standard where you start with one ounce and then you measure the car and it's a half an ounce per inch of car and I just round it up and then I multiply that by 10%, so I add 10% more weight, and it, it gives it a good, a good feel to the car, and it tracks really well. And um, some of the things you have to do on these cars is they have these stops on the inside, and I had to cut those back because it wasn't allowing the floor to sit in properly. So I figured out how far the floor had to go in, which is 80 thousandths, and I put these uh, 40 by 60 strips on the inside so when I put the floor in it sits even all the way down. Now I will be cutting cutting these off and putting wire here and here. That's the only wire I'll put on it and it really helps dress it up much much nicer. And then the only other thing that needs to be done, I'm doing two of those or two, actually I'm doing three. One is done and is in primer gray. I just need to finish building the other two. But one of the things I need to do is these end pieces don't reach the floor when they're properly placed in the, in the bodies. So I've added a piece of 40 thousandths on here and it's anywhere between 
25 thousandths and 35 thousandths. So I've added more than what needs to be, and then what I'll do is I'll trim it back until it fits to the floor perfectly with these, these angled sides right up even with this angled side. So once that's done, you know, then I can glue these in and, and get working on it. But that's the part that I procrastinate on is, is doing those pieces. I shouldn't. I just, all I have left to do, I have one more body to put together like that and do these. And then I can get these ones going. And they actually look pretty good once they're done. So I'll, I'll keep showing you these as, they, as I go along. But let's get right to it and do some taping. So my hands will probably get in the way a little bit. But, and I'll probably be turning the car this way to work on it. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Maybe that'll help some. There, how's that? That's better. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some tape out here. How long it is doesn't matter. Now, the only place that I use where I cut the tape on the glass is when I do the ladders, in between the ladders. Other than that, I just hold it in my hand here, take the scissors, Cut off that little end there. Like I said, taping is not a science. It's just time consuming. Um, and this car doesn't need to be, you know, precision taped or masked. It just needs to have the masking on the wood. I mean, I'm not going to, I'm going to take the time to do it right. But, and it's not going to be ugly, but it doesn't need to be super, super precise. So... I'm going to do this little plate here, then I'll do the grab irons, and then I can tape up everything in there. So I'm going to cut out, cut a little piece there, cut for each side, and then cut a piece for the top. Now you'll notice these aren't parallel or square to each other, and it doesn't have to be. All right, so let's do a let's do a side here. Let's do the other side here. Hopefully, you can see this. And then do the top. Try to zoom in on that a little bit more. Now with the toothpick, I just take a piece of... Uh, I like these... At a local hobby store, actually a hobby store in Fayetteville, North Carolina, I found these they're rather stiff um, sanding sticks. And I just, you know, sand the, uh, the uh, toothpick and get an edge to it so, it so that I can push it into corners. And on the other end, I, I sand it sharp <clears throat> so I can poke myself. All right, so let's... Move some of the stuff out of the way. Get the used up tape out of the way. Okay, so we got that. So let's go ahead and do a grab iron. Now the size of these pieces I'm cutting is, there's no science to it, I'm just cutting pieces out. So let's put one on the bottom of the grab iron. Now the bolt's round, but like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, so I just put it right up the edge of the bolt. Because I'm not going to be chipping up to these edges. But I do want all of the wood to be protected. And then this one's going to go this way. 
and I need a small piece that will go up against this side of the bolt. Oh, bending those tips down really helped a lot. There, and then I can put a piece over the top of the bolt there. There we go. Just like that. All right, so let's do this grab iron. How's that? That's better. There we got a small piece there. Small piece there. And a small piece there. And we'll cut that one like that. There we go. There's too much of an angle on the top of that one. Whoops. Sorry about that. Trying to keep this on, zoomed in on camera. Now, remember, if you keep stacking a lot of tape on top of each other, you're going to change the, the amount of paint that hits the inside edge of these batten strips. But on something like this, doesn't matter because I'm not going to be chipping this and the and the, the metal and the wood at the same time. You don't want to do that. You want just the wood or just the metal. So if it builds up a little bit here, that's okay because your weathering is also going to be, you know, when you do stuff like uh, uh, pin washes and stuff like that, that's going to be right up to the edge too. So that's going to cover anything that might show through, but Actually, it's not going to show through because there's going to be blue paint over it all. Hopefully, I can keep this on camera. All right. And one more piece. go vertical there. Oh, that didn't. Like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect, but like I said, I don't want it to be ugly either. There we go. Okay, now we can just fill all of that in. So, let's get this bottom filled in. Too much. that there, put that there, and I can just stick this piece right there. Okay, now we can fill in the rest of that. Now, to do this side, I can easily just put one piece along there. It's not straight across the bottom. I'll show you how you can how I'll fix that. All right, so now I 
Now, you can do this on the model if you have different levels of detail. And what I mean by that is, down at the bottom there's a recess for the board, like a seam line for the board. And at the top, there's a metal strip that I can burnish up against. Then you can take the scalpel blade, which is super, super sharp. And I can go right up against that. You're going to cut slightly into the model, but it's not going to be noticeable. What you got to try to do, though, is keep it on the seam. Oh, see, it went, it, it rode up the seam, so I have to come from the other direction. And just do that. Pick that off. The one thing you have to be careful of, which I was afraid of was these if you cut outside the line you get that little cut mark so I'll just burnish it down and no more cut mark okay now on the bottom it does the same thing so I'm just gonna cut a little bit off the bottom just like that Now you wouldn't want to do that when you're doing like precision masking because you'll be cutting into your model that you don't want to be doing. This one's okay because it's not precise. There we go. Now I just need a piece of tape over the top there. Now, if you don't want to cut the tape on your model, which sometimes I don't, and what you can do, and, you, and, you, and you're not cutting a square corner, what you can do is you can give the corner a relief. I'll show you to me. So that's going to go in like that. So I want to cut a relief on this side because this and this are not square to each other. So I'll just go cut a relief in there like that. I'll put that tip in the corner. Right like that. Just like that. And then you can just take a small piece of tape and since you don't have to go all the way up to the top of the corner, you can just Put it right in there. Just like that. And then we just got to fill that piece in, which is easy enough to do. Now we just have to fill that in with tape. And a little bit more. Sorry, I'm off picture. I was on do all I'm doing off camera is cutting tape, <laughs> cutting the edge of the tape. 
and cut little pieces off. Cover up these gaps here. I'll just take that piece and put it over there. There we go. So there's one panel all taped up. I'll go ahead and do this panel on camera to show you how I do these corners. It's the same. I just put a piece of tape in there and then I'll take the scalpel and cut it. And then I'm going to go off camera and get these ones done because there's nothing different about it. And when I and then I'll get these ones done. This, these details here are done the same. I'll just put tape around them. And, and stuff like that, just like I do these little plates. But when I get to the ladders, I'll come back on camera and show you how I do the ladders quickly. Okay, so to do the angle, I'll just, I'll just video this angle here, and uh, the rest is all the same. So I'll just take a piece of tape here. Cut the... Cut it off at the bottom, cut that, that tear portion off the bottom and off the top. I don't like those pieces. Get off my fingers. Okay, so to do this section, I'll line it up with the bottom of the wood and the inside of the brace. That stuck down there. Now, if you were doing precision taping, you'd want to cut the edge of the tape. Because the raw edge of the tape has little microscopic undulations on it. And you want a nice straight line if you're doing like a like a um, a pinstripe or something like that. But for this we don't need that. Okay, so I'll get that in and I'll burnish this right up against the, the brace there. Then we'll take the scalpel knife and I'll come in and I'll cut right along, right along that line putting a little bit of pressure on it to keep it in that joint. There we go. Take it off and there's, there's it taped up. Now you'll never see that cut on the model because it's in a area that there's two levels of detail. It's right in that corner. So then to do the rest of this, Put a piece of tape there. <coughs> Excuse me. This one should go pretty quick. So I will <coughs> excuse me. There we go, and we'll burnish that. This time we'll try not to cut the strip up there. Just like that. <coughs> Take the knife. And there it is, all set. So I can take this piece here that I just cut, and I'll just stick it right. Actually, that's squared off. So let's put that right there. And I just need a nice small piece.
Use the edge of the tape there. And there's two panels taped up. So I'll go ahead and get these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight done. And then I'll come back on camera and show you how I do inside the ladders. Okay, so I've got all the panels taped off. Like I said, I'll come back and I'll show you how to do these. So let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, so what I do, take a piece of tape, it doesn't have to be that long. Just put it down there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut little pieces and do the four corners and then fill in in, in between instead of trying to measure each piece and cutting it out and all that kind of crap. We're just going to fill it in. So cut those and they don't have to be all the same size. So just measure out a piece here, something like that. Something like that. Something like that. And that'll take care of it. This bottom piece is too small, so I'll just take that away. And now I'll just cut pieces that aren't quite as long as that ladder is wide. You just have to cut a bunch of them. I think that'll do it. All right. So now, you zoom in, just going to take a little pieces of these things. There we go. So what we do, I'll just do one because they're all the same. We'll do this top one. Now, I'm not going to go to the, let's do the bottom one. Yeah, let's do the bottom one because that's what's on camera. Top one's not on camera. So there's the bottom piece of wood and then there's the metal frame. Just like that. Get another piece out. Let's go up against the rung there. Oh, you know what? Instead of doing that, because these aren't all the same size, what I'll do is I'll just come across the other side from the bottom. Do that. Get another piece. So you're getting the idea of what I'm doing here. Right up against the rung. Like that. Now it looks like they're overlapping the bottom and the top one, but they're not. So I'll have to put another piece of tape across that. So put that one right in there. Normally I'd flip the model around, but since it's on video, I can't. And it's so close, I can't do that. But the tape got into the right spot. There's that, and it looks like I'm going to need to go ahead and put these pieces in. Now, if I'd have cut these a little wider, they would have overlapped, and I wouldn't have to do this. But that's okay. Better be safe than sorry. There we go. All right, and basically, that's how I'll do the ladder. So I'll go ahead and do the same thing for the rest of these ladders, and then we'll get it painted. All right, so I've got this side all taped up, and I've got this side all taped up. Now it's time to go throw some paint on this, but first I need to take this frame off the bottom because I don't want it to 
Well, I'll take it off over there. It's really tight. These sides are bowed in a little bit. So I'll actually get this tape off my fingers. Let's see if I can't pull this off and break something. I definitely will not. There we go. Need to glue this on. That's tight. So I'll go give this a, sh a coat of, of metal color, uh, patina, like, like patina or rusted metal color, and uh, let it dry for a little bit, and then I get the chore of taking all this tape off. Put it on just to take it off. <laughs> all right, we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, so I've got the, the brown color on it, or the color that I want to represent the uh, weathered metal. Um, look to it. This is a mixture of Tamiya. Let me zoom in a little bit here. This is a mixture of Tamiya flat brown and uh, gloss black. I don't know what the ratio is. I just mix it till I like the color and then I thin it one to one with uh, Mr. Hobby, Mr. Mr. Color level leveling thinner. So, and then I shoot it at about 18 PSI. So with that the way it is, I'm gonna let that dry for about 20 minutes, half hour, and then I'm gonna take the do the task of taking all this tape off. Now I do have a little bit of a setback, but it's not a major one. <laughs> I forgot to paint these tack boards. Um, and mask them off. So when all this is done, before I shoot a clear coat over it, I'll let it dry for a day, so it's like a setback of a day. I'll mask that off, shoot it gray, put some um, a wash over it. Same for these these ones on the on the ends here. I'll do those as well. So I got this door, this door, and the two ends, but that'll be, that'll be fun. I'll just mask that whole area off shoot it gray, let it dry, put a wash on it, let it dry for a day, and then put a clear coat over all this. But I'll show you what this looks like once I take all the tape off of it. I don't think you want to watch me. All I'm going to do is peel the tape off, and that's really not all that exciting. All right, folks, well, there's how it looks. I'm ready for a clear coat and then some hairspray and then the top coat. But I'll go over that in the video. Um, I just wanted to show you what it looks like with all the tape off of it. Now, remember, I still have to do this tack board, the one on the other side, and the ones on the end. So I'll take care of that um, next, and then wait a, you know, wait a day for the uh, wash to dry in it nicely. And then I'll give it a clear coat of satin varnish. Now, the reason I want to use satin varnish, I mean, I could use gloss, I could use you know, semi-gloss, and I could use satin or flat. But I don't want to use gloss, and I don't want to use semi-gloss for the reasons that I want the hairspray to bite into the finish a little bit, because I don't want lots of paint coming off. Um, it's my theory. I, I, I haven't proven this, or I haven't heard anybody talk about it, but it's my theory that depending on the surface, whether it's flat, you know, uh, satin, semi-gloss, or gloss, depends on how much the hairspray will actually bite into it. I mean, you could get all the hairspray off with enough water because this hairspray is water soluble. That's the whole idea behind hairspray. But if it has a um, little bit rougher surface to bite into, then hopefully what I'm, or what I'm theorizing and hoping is my chips will be smaller. I don't have to, you know, if I put too much water on, it's just not going to sheet off. So that's my goal is to get really tiny, tiny chips and, and things like that. But we'll go over that um, when I get to that point. But right now, I just need to fix these mistakes that I made and then get a clear coat over it. So that's what it looks like. Well, hopefully that's another step in the right direction on this project. Um, I'm very, very pleased with the results so far. Um, I really like masking uh, sharp lines and stuff like that, and I like the way this car looks right now. I'd like to leave it the way it is, but I'm not going to do that. Um, so, as I said, I just got a few things to do, and we'll move on to the next step. So, 
I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was uh, something that maybe you can try or, or put in your toolbox for um, future reference or use or, or whatever. So anyway, again, I hope you like that and thanks for watching.